AQSE listed Probiotics Health was established by Optibiotics Health PLC to develop probiotics to tackle cardiovascular disease and other lifestyle conditions which are affecting growing numbers of people across the world. Since its creation, probiotics has become a global leader in specialist probiotics for use in foods, supplements and uh, uh, other therapeutics, biotherapeutics. Stephen O'Hara is the founder and non-exec director of the company and he joins us now on the line. Stephen, it's good to be able to catch up with you again. Um, I, I want to get uh, into more details about uh, you and, and the, uh, your background behind this, but explain more about what it is you're doing with Probiotics Health. So probiotics are bacteria that have a health benefit. Most people will be familiar with probiotics in yogurt, um, where it's been established for many, many years, they have a health benefit. And other companies uh, focus very much on gut health and general health and well-being. When I uh, started um, Optibiotics, which is the parent company of uh, probiotics a number of years or so ago, I developed both a probiotics and a prebiotic platform. I wanted to create a, a probiotic that met an unmet need, a large unmet need. And if you take cardiovascular health, so cardiovascular disease will kill about a third of us. And if you then look at the treatments to reduce cardiovascular risk, they are quite um, difficult because while statins are very good as a product, about a third of people who take a statin will come off the statin after a year. This is WHO criteria uh, because of side effects. So there was clearly a large market there and there's clearly an unmet need for a product that was safe, so it didn't have the side effects of statins and was efficacious. And that's what we created in Probiotic Health. And how far down the route are you to getting these products approved? What is the approval process? Because as you say, we, we know about probiotics in, in yogurt, for example. Uh, how are you applying these and, and what sort of hurdles are there to get them approved? It's quite a few hurdles. Um, so let's just got to go through it in, in sort of a stepwise process. The first um, step is to understand um, the science and how a product works. So we had to build the science and understand how our product works and the mode of action. We're very clear on, on, on that. We published on, on that. And that's important because you can understand then how to combine various ingredients with your particular product. And it's also very tough um, who want to take on your particular product. The second you have, uh, thing you have to do, you have to make sure that the product works and is safe. So you go through um, clinical studies. So we've gone through three clinical studies and they're all independent clinical studies that show our product is safe and efficacious. The third thing you have to do is obviously to manufacture it to, to high scale and um, in a, a way which is um, very consistent. So you have the same product each time. And we've been doing that now for about um, eight years. Um, and then you have to then um, take the product and put it on the market in each market across the world and the Europe and it's it, people think of Europe as being a consistent market. It's not. You have to go through various regulatory hurdles in each of those markets to establish the product either as a supplement or as a food. And we've gone through all those particular processes to make sure that we have a, a product that is um, safe and is efficacious and we formulate it in a range called Colbiome in four different types of product to reduce the risk of various aspects of cardiovascular health. So we've got a product to reduce cholesterol and we've got a product to reduce blood pressure. We've got a product that reduces um, uh, impact on cardiovascular um, risk by reducing um, the uh, buildup of, um, of plaques in the, uh, in the um, arteries. And we've got another product that is more generic um, so that range then fits the needs of, um, of, of all the countries around the world in terms of products, but also gives a product range that we can share with various partners and customers around the world. So are we talking here about products that are just associated with food as a supplement, or are you also going down the route of bringing about something that's going to be a prescription medication, which is prescribed by the medical community? Yeah, so there's two, there's three routes actually. The first is a supplement, okay, and that's been our, our focus. The second is to incorporate a probiotic into food, like a, a yogurt, and that requires a different level 
of, of regulatory oversight because of course you're including something in a um a yogurt for example which uses cholesterol but you may people may buy that particular product with normal level of cholesterol so you have to show your product doesn't reduce cholesterol in people who have normal level of cholesterol but we've gone through a process a very complex process and we've got what's called fda grass and GRAS stands for generally regarded as safe. And that's a that been a approved in the US, okay? Um, and we'll really now start to focus on the um, food area, particularly in terms of yogurt. We've got a number of products around the world, particularly in South America, um, where we have companies taking um, our probiotic into, into yogurt. And the third area is a biotherapeutic. Um, we tend to avoid that particular route because the costs associated with it and the high regulatory barriers, but we do have a partner who's taken um, our probiotic LPLDL down that particular route. But I have to say, and I've said all the way along, this is a high risk route and many companies and people will be familiar with 4D Pharma who um, yeah. haven't succeeded on that route because of the cost and time it takes. So to confirm, you are revenue generating, aren't you? Yeah, we ha we've been doubling sales every single year since we've launched the uh, company. In 2021, we did £1.1 million worth of revenue. That's been reported. Um, last year, we increased our sales by about 30% and grown quite rapidly. And even more interesting, um, and this is before we, uh, the impact of our new CEO, by the second week of February, we had just under half a million pounds worth of orders for 2023. So you can see that this is really scaling up very, very quickly. So this is a, a rapidly growing business. And that's because people are becoming more aware of the value of supplements. Many people use supplements during COVID um, and people become more aware of the science and the proven science behind supplements and taking these products uh, and finding success. So when we get customers who use our products, we sell direct on the online store, we have a 95% retention rate. So people who take our products stick with them. Um, and it, it's, a, it's a, a wonderful product and we get some wonderful results. So most people reduce their cholesterol by between 30 and 40% um, using our products. That's as good as many statins. What happens now? Do you start really to then start to rake in some big profits after you've got this market established? Uh, and I guess as you grow and the distribution increases, that's when the really big profitable business starts to, to, to kick in. Uh, from your experience about establishing companies and, and making them profitable, um, where do we go from here? What, what do you say to investors about the future? I think on your website you talk about big commercial opportunities in 2023. So I guess this is all part of the same thing about where the company is going and the trajectory of profitability. Yeah, so we're profitable now. Uh, we're profitable in 2021. We'll be profitable in 2022. And we'll certainly be profitable in 2023. So it's very important when you build a, a, a company to try to get to profit as early as possible, because in doing so, um, you can then be self-sustaining and you're only taking investment uh, income to grow to the next level. So in terms of the next level, uh, we appointed um, a new CEO. So I was the CEO of, Opti of Optibotics, um, health PLC on the AIM market and probiotic health PLC on the Aquis market last year, which clearly is not sustainable because you get conflicts. So I appointed Steen Anderson as CEO of probiotics and he started in, in January. We spent the first six to eight weeks getting Steen up to um, speed in terms of understanding the science, understanding the products. Um, and um, what he brings, if I sort of take you through the, the process in relation to your question, is that what I'm really good at, I'm really good at you know, all the things we discussed earlier, proving the science, getting the clinical studies proven, getting the regulatory approvals, um, getting the, um, the, uh, the company to profitability. What you want next is a true dying in the wool salesman to lead the company. And so we brought Steen in. Um, he is a real salesperson. He will take this company to the next level. And I can see, uh, if I look at the, the market, and I look at our market capitalization, we are very, very undervalued. And if you look, as I said earlier, at our sales revenue, if you look at our profitability, um, I, I, I could see this really being being worth you know, 20 to 30 to 40 million um, this, this year, really could.
which is which is three or four times where we are at the moment. Um, what about um, the listing? You, you say this is listed on AQSE. Why AQSE? I mean, we know it is a growth market and it, it does specialise in small caps, but why particularly the Aquis market? So a listed company is on the A market and on the um, um, Aquis market, and there's a number of there's some value in terms of um, Aquis, and the biggest value is typically to put a company on on AIM that will cost you between three quarters of a million and a million pounds. Put a company on to the Aquis market normally costs between three hundred and three hundred thirty thousand pounds. So it's a good starting point for a company in its growth cycle, whereby if you think we raised 2.5 million, I didn't want to raise 2.5 million and uh, then spend a million on putting a company on the on the stock market. So what it means, it gives us the, the opportunity to get the company on the market, establish our, our, our growth, then we can then move on to other markets in the in the future. I'm sure most people are aware that after you're on the market, um, uh, for 18 months, moving from um, the Aquis market to the A market is far cheaper and far quicker than um, doing it stepwise. Uh, you're a very busy man. I mean, you're a, you're a microbiologist at heart, I know, with more than, I think, 50 publications behind you. And my understanding is you own more than 100 patents. I mean, you've built several companies, as you've explained, taking them through to IPO. You founded Optobiotics 11 years ago, Skin Biotherapeutics, another company I've come across eight years ago, and now Probiotics through Optibiotics. How do you find time to squeeze all this in? I have to say, you are, as founder of this business, you are a non-exec direct here. You're not CEO, as you've, as you've explained. But there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of time uh, to, to, to set aside for all, all that you do. How, how do you go about all this? I think the, the first thing is I enjoy what I'm, I'm, I'm doing. So it doesn't feel like, uh, like work. Uh, and what I try to do is create products which um, have value to people. So when you get um, customers right back to you and said, no, they were on statins and they um, struggled with statins, they took our product, and now their cholesterol uh, has gone down to normal levels. So you you know that you've had a real impact in, in, in their lives. And then that really um, drives you forward. Um, and just in terms of the companies, Skin Biotherapeutics, I, I founded, I took it to a level and I brought in a CEO and I brought in a chairman, similar to what I've done in terms of probiotics. So I brought in a chairman, Adam Reynolds, I brought in a CEO, Steve Anderson. And my role now is very much on the corporate side. So whilst I'm an executive director, I will do a lot of the um, the corporate side in terms of the interviews, while Steam focuses, I want to keep Steam focused totally on selling this product and building a business. So I'm a non-executive director, look after the corporate side of things, uh, but my focus now going forward will be very much on um, on Optibiotics Health PLC, because that's a, a, a company that grew really, really rapidly. It struggled a little bit last year with the downturn, with the um, issues with um, uh, the global economic downturn, but now it's bouncing back very, very quickly. And that's my focus for um, 2023, as well as supporting Steen on the um, probiotic side. That's the that's, that's a good point. That's, that's a really good point, actually. Do you see what you're doing as insulated, I think is probably a good word, from the economic downturn as we are seeing it at the moment? We've just been hearing about uh, the strains and stresses of, of consumers. I guess your, your, your interest, these companies that you, you, you founded are pretty insulated, aren't they, from, from the downturn? Well, there's two things, really. The first thing is in any downturn, people will still focus on their health. Okay. Uh, and particularly something like a cardiovascular uh, health. If you take these products, reduce your risk. If you stop taking them, your risk goes up again. And people don't want to have that uh, that risk, so they they, they value the um, um, uh, their health. The, the second thing is that a lot of our our, our sales are overseas. So if I take um, probiotics, um, uh, we sell a lot of um, product now to the uh, to the US. Uh, we sell a lot. Go back to your point earlier, the pharma companies, particularly in um, uh, in Italy, which is the largest probiotic market in Europe and the second largest in the in the world. So we've got a we're not UK centric, but going forward, picking up a point you said earlier, we're trying to do a couple of things. Um, we're focusing very much on um, on what's called D2C, direct to consumer, the selling direct to consumer. 
and we got good retention rates. And actually, it's interesting, even though we got a UK website, 20% of our sales on that website in the UK are abroad, but a large number to the US. You can see the US market is quite a big market. So we want to extend our, our reach into the US, take more products to the US, extend our our, um, our um, uh, D2C sales, direct to consumer sales. And of course, if you sell direct to a consumer, you get the cash in straight away. Mm. Whereas if you sell to a partner, they may want, you know, three, um, um, one month, three months, or sometimes with the larger retail companies, nine months or a year um, in terms of work before they pay the invoice. So it's a far stronger position you're in if you go direct to consumer. Mm. Uh, one, one final question. I noticed from the shareholder register, you, I think, have 5% shareholding, a little bit more than that, of uh, probiotics. Do you, as a rule, keep interest in all the businesses you, you've you've listed and, you, and you've, uh, you've, you've, you've um, established? Yeah, so I put in that half a million in, um, in, in Optibiotics. I put money in the uh, listing of, um, uh, of probiotics. Um, I'll add as the opportunity arises uh, when we're not within a, a period where um, there'll be announcements. Um, so um, yeah, I take a, a, a keen interest not just in terms of leading and um, involvement in the company, but also in terms of um, a, a stake in the company, because I think that's very important for shareholders. So you, sh you suffer the pain and you suffer the, um, the gain. And typically, and people can look at my record on this, I get 10, 20 times return on the companies that I've, um, uh, I've put on the market. Now, currently we're in a very, a strange market we're very much in a bear market yep. but i'm pretty comfortable that with probiotics that you know, if you look one two years ahead this will be worth you know 40 50 60 million um and one other point to 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 um, to add this industry is a very much a growth industry is the probiotic industry and many partners uh, are looking to acquire companies who are just like um, probiotics that have the ip that have the sales that have the um uh, the, the network and have a range of products that have all the regulatory approvals so i'd be surprised if you don't get um, an offer from a large player in the next couple of years or so we yeah. certainly have had a tentative offers or approaches i would should say over the last 12 months yeah that's 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 clearly um something obviously that you're going to have to contend with later on uh, but look Stephen, we'll have to leave it there but thanks indeed for joining us it's been a pleasure talking to you Stephen O'Hara is the founder and non-exec director of uh, Op Probiotics Health and, uh, as we've just heard there, a 5% shareholder in the business.